Underneath applications like LinkedIn, Facebook, Uber, and eBay, they're all powered by an underlying concept called Knowledge Graph. But what is a Knowledge Graph? And why should I care to learn about Knowledge Graphs at all? Think of it like this. When you go to your Facebook account, you might have hundreds of friends you are connected with. And among those hundreds of people, they all have their own connections among themselves and also other people that you're not connected to. And representing this entire ecosystem of relationships that isn't static, meaning as time progresses, these relationships also change, can be tricky to represent. While storing them in SQL in a relational database could certainly help, but you're limited to the initial structure that you set up in the database. In other words, even though you might have stored these relationships efficiently in SQL, there's a huge cost in retrieving this knowledge because it requires you to do heavy joins across tables to get what you're looking for. And so the burden of trying to store them for efficient retrieval is often upfront and can have many negative impacts later on. Knowledge Graph stores information in nodes and edges, where people become nodes and the connection becomes the edge. And storing information in this way can have a huge positive impact when it comes to information retrieval for many reasons. Here are two main reasons why Knowledge Graph is powerful. When it comes to knowledge representation, a new type of relationship can just be added by essentially adding a new edge to the existing representation. For example, if all you tracked before was your friendship with other people, and now you have new information that tracks family relationships on top, you can just simply add a new edge on top of the existing knowledge structure without breaking the existing friendship graph. As you can see, a knowledge graph is extremely effective in adding new information and knowledge representation. And the same thing can be said of knowledge retrieval. Earlier, we discussed how SQL has the inherent flaw in the complexity of data retrieval due to heavy joins for complex queries. Let's see what that looks like in knowledge graphs. Instead of relying on the users to construct a complicated query to retrieve data properly from a predetermined table structure, knowledge graph can traverse through the existing knowledge graph and edges. So instead of trying to conceptualize how you'll get the data out, the knowledge graph inherently leverages its existing connections and simply walks through the graph to get the data that you're looking for. So both in knowledge representation and knowledge retrieval side, we have a huge advantage when it comes to a certain type of knowledge. This is why companies like LinkedIn, Facebook, Uber, and eBay that typically have data that is heavily relationship-based that changes so frequently use knowledge graph as a primary method. For example, let's say you want to find a list of all your friends' friends. In traditional SQL, you might structure your query like this, which should get you a list of all lists of friends' friends. But in a simple graph database, your query would look something like this. When using the graph structure, it will find the second hop in the edge from Alice and find all the relationships there. And finding the third hop would just require you to simply change the number from 2 to 3. While knowledge graphs shouldn't be used in all cases, and relational databases like SQL certainly have their own place, knowing and using knowledge graphs can be extremely useful, especially in domains like AI, biochemistry, social media, and more. Let's hop onto a lab to find out more about how we can actually use this theory in practice. In this app, we're going to learn to build and query graph databases using Neo4j. We will create a movie recommendation system that demonstrates why graph databases are powerful for finding complex relationships. When you need to answer questions like, find all movies where an actor has worked with the director of The Matrix, a graph database makes this simple with just a few relationship traversals. This lab takes about 25 to 35 minutes to complete. When I open the lab, I'm dropped right into the world of knowledge graphs. Access the labs using links in the description below and follow along with me. The first step is to verify our environment. In this task, we're asked to run this Python script. This script checks if Python version is 3.9 or higher, verifies the Neo4j server is running, and installs the Neo4j driver version 5.14 if missing. If Neo4j is not running, the script will attempt to start a Docker sidecar container automatically. Wait until you see the environment verification complete message. 
Next, we have an informational section about accessing Neo4j browser. This is important because you can visualize your graph by clicking view port 7474. You need to modify the bolt connection URL from 7474 port to 7687 port and change the port from 7687 to 443. Leave authentication as no authentication and click connect. For Python scripts inside VM, they connect via this following link automatically. Now we have a knowledge check about nodes and relationships. In a graph database, a node represents an entity like an actor or movie, and a relationship connects two nodes and describes how they relate. The question asks which best describes a relationship. The answer is a connection between two nodes that describe how they relate, because relationships are connections between nodes with direction and types like acted in or directed. Moving to task one, which is about connecting to Neo4j, open the file task1connect.py. You need to complete three to-dos. At line 26, replace none with the following link for the URI. At line 32, replace none with five for the maximum retry attempts. At line 38, replace none with return one as test for the test query. Run the script with the following Python query. When successful, you will see task one complete connected to Neo4j database. In the next task, we are asked to create our first nodes. Open task two nodes.py and complete the three to-dos. At line 37, replace none with Keanu Reeves for the actor's name. At line 60, replace none with The Matrix for the movie title. At line 66, replace none with 1999 for the movie year. Run the script to create the first actors and movie notes. After running, the script shows a terminal visualization of the notes created. Now, let me go to Neo4j browser to see what we created. I run the query match n return n. In the graph view, I can see two nodes appear. One is an actor node labeled Keanu Reeves, and the other is a movie node labeled The Matrix with year 1999. The nodes are shown as circles with different colors for each label type. If I click on a node, I see its properties in the sidebar. Right now, the nodes are not connected because we have not created any relationships yet. After creating nodes, we have another knowledge check about relationships. The question asks why directed relationships are important. They allow us to ask specific questions like who acted in The Matrix versus what movies did Keanu appear in? Because directions gives us relationship semantic meaning. Now we move to task three, which covered creating relationships. Open task three relations.py. At line 37, replace none with acted in for the relationship type. At line 43, replace none with Keanu Reeves for the actor's name. At line 49, replace none with The Matrix for the movie title. Run the script to connect your nodes with acted in relationship. After running, the script displays the relationships as Keanu Reeves acted in to The Matrix 1999. Now let me go back to Neo4j browser and run match A at actor dash acted in M at movie return ARM. This time, I can see the relationship as an arrow connecting the actor node and the movie node. The arrow points from Keanu Reeves to the matrix, indicating the direction of the acted in relationship. If I clicked on the relationship line, I can see its type is acted in. This visual representation makes it easy to understand how entities are connected in a graph database. Task four is a challenge about adding a director and writing queries. Open task for challenge.py. At line 37, replace none with Lana Wachowski for the director's name. At line 79, replace none with the complete match pattern. Match D at director, name Lana Wachowski, directed M at movie, to find movies directed by the director. At line 85, replace none with 1990 for the year threshold to filter movies released after 1990. Run the script. This is how you will learn that match where return query pattern. Notice that the director is Lana Wachowski, one of the Wachowski siblings who directed The Matrix. In Neo4j browser, I run match D director R directed M movie return DRM to visualize the new director node. Now I see three dots, Keanu Reeves as actor, The Matrix as movie, and Lana Wachowski as director. There are two relationships. Keanu Reeves acted in The Matrix and Lana Wachowski directed The Matrix. The movie node is the center with arrows coming from both actor and director nodes. This is the power of graph databases. You can see how different entities relate to each other 
at a glance. In task five, we scale things up with bulk import. This is important because real world graphs contain thousands of nodes. Open task five bulk.py and line 61, replace none with movie data, iterate over the movie data set. At line 104, replace none with 20 for the minimum expected movie count. At line 134, replace none with movie count greater than equals minimum movies expected to validate the import. The script loads 20 movies, including the Matrix trilogy, Inception, Interstellar, The Dark Knight, Gladiator, Blade Runner, Alien, and more. The key learning here is the difference between create, which always creates new nodes, and merge, which only creates if the node does not exist run the script. After the bulk import, let me go to Neo4j browser and run match return p limit 25. Now the graph view is much more interesting. I can see a network of nodes connected by relationships. There are multiple movie nodes, actor nodes and director nodes all interconnected. Keanu Reeves is connected to multiple Matrix movies, Speed, Breakpoint and other films. Christopher Nolan is connected to Inception, Interstellar and The Dark Knight. I can drag nodes to rearrange the visualization and see the cluster more clearly. Let me run match m at movie return m.title m.year order by m.year descending limit 25 to see table view of all movies sorted by year. Task 6 is a capstone where we implement a recommendation engine. This is where graph databases truly shine. Open task 6 recommendation.py. At line 41, replace none with acted in for the hot pattern. At line 47, replace none with the matrix for the base movie title. At line 53, replace none with acted in for the relationship type used in traversal. Run the script to see movie recommendations based on shared actors. The query finds movies by traversing the pattern movie, actor, movie. You will see recommendations like the matrix reloaded, matrix revolutions, speed, point break, and more because they share the actors with the matrix. The script also finds actors who appear with Keanu Reeves and directors who worked with him. Now let me visualize this recommendation query in Neo4j browser. I run the following query. The graph shows the matrix in the center with actors radiating outward and each actor connects to the other movies. I can see Keanu Reeves connected to Speed, Point Break, Johnny Mnemonic, and other matrix films. Lawrence Fishburne connects the matrix to other matrix sequels. This multi-hop traversal is what makes graph databases so powerful for recommendations. The same query in SQL would require multiple complex joins, but here is just a simple pattern match. We have a final knowledge check about the graph database value proposition. The question asks which use case is best suited for graph databases. The answer is finding recommendations based on complex relationships because graph databases excel at relationship traversal. While SQL can handle this with expensive joins, graphs will make it natural and blazingly fast. The final section invites you to visualize your complete graph in Neo4j browser. Run match n return n to see all nodes. You see colored nodes for different types like actor, movie, and director with lines connecting them. Click on nodes to see their properties and drag them to rearrange visualization. Try finding all movies by Christopher Nolan and match D at director named Christopher Nolan directed M at movie. In the graph, you will see Christopher Nolan as the central director node connected to Inception, Interstellar, and The Dark Knight. Or find actors who appeared with Keanu Reeves using match A1 at actor named Keanu Reeves acted in M at movie acted in A2 actor return A1 M A2. This shows all co-stars like Lawrence Fishburne, Sandra Bullock, Patrick Swayze, and Al Capone connected through their shared movies. Explore these queries by yourself to see how powerful graph traversal can be. Before wrapping up, I want to highlight a few things I pay special attention to along this way. The Bolt protocol at Bolt localhost 7687 for database communication, merge instead of create to avoid duplicate nodes when bulk importing. Relationship direction matters for semantic meaning, Multi-hop traversals like movie, actor, movie make recommendations simple and fast. Neo4j browser for visualizing and debugging your graph with both table and graph views. That is it. We went from zero to a working knowledge graph with a movie recommendation engine. We connected to Neo4j, created actor and movie nodes with properties, built relationships with acted in and directed, added a director node for Lana Wachowski 
bulk loaded 20 movies with their cast and crew, and implemented multi-hop recommendation algorithm that finds movies through shared actors. You now understand why social networks, e-commerce platforms, and knowledge management systems use graph databases for complex relationship queries.